audio. The big pitfall that you see a lot of climbers on, on maybe a cruxy route or right where the pump really hits is that they're gonna climb to a point and they're gonna fall there and then they're going to go from there to the top. Um, and they're just going to continue that cycle over and over and over again. And you get into this one fall purgatory a little bit. Hey y'all, I'm Ryan Devlin and I am so psyched to share this Struggle Climbing Show Pro Clinic on Endurance with the one and only Drew Mack. You guys, Drew was of course a guest in season one and he's back to take us to school on all things endurance. In this pro clinic, Drew's breaking down endurance climbing, identifying common pitfalls for beginner, intermediate, and advanced climbers. So there's something in there for everyone. And then he's gonna be offering up specific tips and tactics so that we can all level up our endurance game. Drew's of course known as a master of endurance, having put down some of the hardest, longest, and pumpiest sport climbs in the US and abroad. So grab a pen and paper, the professor of pump is in the building. So this is the first of many really, really amazing pro clinics to come where elite athletes are coming in and they're going to be taking us to school on a topic of interest and expertise for them. Drew, of course, focusing on endurance, but we've got many others coming up here. And these are made possible by patrons of the show. So if you are a patron of The Struggle, thank you so much. I love you. You get the whole episode for free here. If you're not a patron of the show, I still love you. Would love for you to consider being a patron. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that after we fight the pump with Drew Mack. You posted a video of you, I believe, jumping off of the top of a moving van and taking a perfect belly flop into a body of water. Was that? I wouldn't, I wouldn't call that a perfect belly flop, but it was an attempted. I was really going for the belly flop. I, I felt like I committed, but then at the last second, I definitely kind of, my face hit before my belly, if that says anything. You led with the face, the old, the very rare face flop. Ooh. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Had a headache the rest of the day, but. You know, um, dude, since the last time we've talked, you have been to France, I think. Went to France, went to Spain. Yeah. Spain? Been around. You've I had been a great Spain trip. Drew... had a really good Spain trip. Where were, were you in Oleana? Senalina with Johnson. Yeah. Baller. Oh my gosh. Yeah. You were guys were, you guys were, were doing some really cool stuff out there. Tell me about it. Um, when you think about like an international trip like that, like a big old trip going out to Spain. How do you set goals for something like that? Oh, that's a great question. So, I mean, Jonathan and I talked to, we were on the same page for this kind of trip um, and how it, we were on the same page of how it evolved as well, because I think we both really wanted to try something like at our limit going into that trip, um, which was like March, April time. We really wanted to try like a really hard route for us and spend, you know, five, five and a half weeks, like really locked in. Um, but then both of us, like when we got there, we kind of felt like, you know, beginners at this crag, you know, we hadn't really done much. There's so many classic routes, you know, like, I mean, it's an historic crag in a lot of ways, you know, um, old school, you know, it kind of comes in and out of vogue, I think a lot and just stack with hard routes. So I think we were both, uh, kind of like, oh man, we need to like pay our dues a bit here. Um, and kind of do some of the, the classic routes at, at some of the lower grades, um, and so, yeah, we both did, I did four routes that I thought were, were really hard for me and challenging. And Jonathan did five routes that were really hard for him. Um, and some other things, you know, just kind of like, you know, learning the crag, learning, you know, the drives, learning what to warm up on, um, you know, learning like to what, where the routes go. Um, and, and so I think both of us kind of like, we learned the vibe really well. We learned the style of climbing. We, we paid our dues and we did some things and we had some success. Um, and then we are already, um, I believe today we were potentially buying tickets for, to go back next year for the same, um, around the same time, but for a little bit longer. So next time we will do what our plan was this time. And that is to try 
um, something kind of harder, closer to our limit. Um, but yeah, now oh, yeah. this time when we go back to try something harder, we won't feel like, you know, you won't be like pulled to like do that thing over there. You know, you're like trying your project, but you're like, oh man, there's that five star route that I've never done before and I really want to do it. Um, and so, yeah, we'll, we won't have as, we'll be able to like kind of put the blinders on a little bit better and lock in. I love so that. I'm like really looking forward to that already. It's, yeah, it's great. Dude, that's so cool. Um, yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's something like, you know, I, I experienced that just even in my, you know, kind of the hometown crag here of of the Red River Gorge There's 2000 routes. And so like, I often think about like, oh, I want to go down and try to get like the perfect repeat on X, Y, or Z or whatever. But then, you know, I get down there and I'm like, ah, oh, but there's 40 incredible routes at this crag that I've never even hung a draw on. And so like, I've uh, it's like a kid in a candy store. It's it is really hard to focus sometimes. I'm trying to figure out for my fall projecting like totally which one I focus on because like you know you could just depending on who you're rolling out with they could just be like oh I'm really psyched on this thing at chocolate and I'll just be like cool like let's just go like I'll just find something at chocolate like oh I'm really psyched yeah. on this thing at left flank like all right I'll find something there and so like it, it takes some discipline I feel like to say okay I'm gonna I'm gonna zero in on my two or three or four or whatever it is for the goals because otherwise you could just just get i mean and have a blast there's nothing wrong with it like i'm still having a great time but like if i want to accomplish something i got to try and get focused so it's it's hard that's cool that you guys kind of did that you like agreed this yeah. season to just like switch things up was that hard um like if you go in with something in mind and maybe you've been studying a route and talking to people who have climbed it or whatever and then you get there and you're like oh wait let's save it for a year um was that tough or were you just like so amped to get on the other stuff? It didn't matter. No, I mean, I felt like, you know, I think you, uh, I felt excited to climb on the other thing. So it wasn't necessarily like a, oh, I'm bummed not to climb on this. And I think we both still climbed on like the, the projects that we had in mind. So we kind of, we have an expectation of them for next time. But I mean, definitely, I think you can go on a trip and like not be prepared for the thing that you want to do and that can be a bummer but i think you know i mean you do this long enough and you know that things change you know i pl make plans all the time and they fall through or something else pops up and weather's bad you know, and you're just like i'm a i'm pretty easy with like go with the flow and not you know be too set in my way hopefully um yeah i don't know good for you man that's awesome well just, when you get just trying to do rigs yeah when you exactly trying to do some rigs but i will say when you're traveling, you know, like it's a good opportunity. Like when you're at home, you know, you should, if you think about your longevity in the red for you, especially like you're, if you're going to climb in the red for a very long time, then, you know, it's good not to do everything, you know, a little like near your limit now, because in the future, you know, you're going to be 50 years old and want to climb a 513 or something like that, you know? And so it's good to like kind of leave some of the, leave some of the things at home for you to, to do later in your climbing, I think, or, you know, and then when you travel, you like, you know, you can try some of the harder things or whatever. And it's different for everybody. Some people just want to go send and other people want to go, you know, try really hard or, you know, do whatever you want to do. Yeah. Well, there's, there's plenty, um, for that. Um, I'm really excited just to like be back rock climbing. Um, after uh, a pretty hot and not not good. motivating summer so yeah it feels good to be out there so these rots that you were yeah. doing in spain yeah. um are these mega long like what's the we're here to talk about endurance and i'm looking for a segue and this may be the segue that i'm looking for um <laughs> <laughs> like describe describe some of these routes great Oh boy. So yeah, I mean, all of Spain, you know, a lot of the routes in Spain that I climb on um, are 40 meters, 50 meters, you know, and I have a love hate relationship with, with some of those routes because it takes so much time and effort to like learn what to do. And if you fall at the top of one of those routes here, I mean, you can be exhausted for days, you know, like if you fall up really high on something, um, so yeah, but it's also like when you get in the flow and you do something really big, you're exhausted, you're just like physically beat up at the top. Like, oh man, it's, it feels so good to clip chains when you're just like grinding it out. Uh, and I, I would say that's a style that, um, 
uh, people think I'm good at. So I guess I'm good at. Yeah. I well, I think know, I think I think you absolutely um, are good at it. And and like, well, and you're also there with Jonathan, thanks. who's also known, you know, for like like that's like a superpower for for both of you. Is that do you agree with that kind of assessment? And and second of all, like, what, what do you attribute it to? Um, I went through puberty at the mother run. Um, you know, it's like <laughs> I like. You know, I started young. I was always climbing fitness routes. I like enjoy being on the wall for a long time. I find it like meditative and, and relaxing at times, you know, um, for a long time, I climbed really slow cause I wanted to feel in control. It, I'd go through a full bag of friction lamps every single day, you know, um, that's an over exaggeration obviously, but, um, yeah, I mean, I just. Yeah, I don't know. I just liked being on the wall, um, and I liked endurance climb, climbing the red. So um, I did it a lot as a kid, and I did it a lot, you know, in all my climbing. And I wanted to go to places like Oleana and Spain, you know, and, and France and things like that, where there's huge, huge routes. I mean, we don't have anything like that in the United States um, that's like that overhanging for that long. Um, so. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, people think I'm good at it. I've done podcasts on it. I get pumped as hell. Like, I get so pumped. It's like, it's, I'm no different than everyone else. I just probably do it a lot more and I try at it. And, you know, I've learned a lot of things that help for me. Um, and yeah, I don't know. Well, let But I also go in phases and I'm sure we'll talk about this later because, you know, there's times where I suck at endurance climbing and then. I go out climbing and I get pumped for two weeks and then, you know, uh, and then I feel great. So, you know, there's, there's a lot to talk about there. I think. Well, yeah, man, I'm really, really psyched to dive in. I, I appreciate you, um, joining for, for a pro clinic here on endurance. Um, I know you've done clinics with power company and, and as you've said, you've done podcasts, you know, dedicated to it. It is, um, something that you've become known for like, just kind of set the set the table here for what endurance like means to you and and what it means to climbing performance for me like endurance climbing is uh you know the capacity to hold on to the wall for a long time i think it's kind of the base level of it you know it's like can you hang on for extended periods of time. Um, and then as you get stronger and your bouldering is better, all of that kind of stuff, then you're able to manage pump better. Uh, I don't think anyone is not getting pumped. I think it's how do you, how do you manage that? How do you um, stay at a low level of pump? How do you maintain where you're at? How do you do hard moves while you're pumped? Um, you know, in bouldering, it's, you know, just keeping, keeping it, your shit together. Um, am I allowed to cuss? Yeah, cuss. No, no cussing, cussing, no cussing. Yeah. Okay. No, oh, cool. Fuck. Um, <laughs> no, uh, so <laughs> you're, you just marked Zach Clip for sure to be That's right. Um, a lot of it is, you know, mental and physical, you know, being able to keep your mind um, calm um, is a really big part of of endurance climbing. Being able to kind of, uh, yeah, be be calm and cool and collected in a lot of ways, and um, kind of making making your way, making my way downtown. <laughs> yes. And that kind of thing. So, so um, yeah, let me be like, I, I want to peel parts of this back for a second before we kind of dive into, yeah. you know, beginner, intermediate, advanced, and in, in, in these kinds of things that I'm excited to get into with you. Um, but you already alluded to this potentially surprising bit of information for some listeners, which is that um, you struggle at times with your endurance. It's probably similar to what you're experiencing, you then you know, to get better at your weaknesses. You um, can't always be focusing on the things that you're really good at. So um, for me, I am, you know, traditionally not as good at bouldering and pure power moves, you know, and that's a product of growing up climbing in the Red River Gorge and not really climbing gyms and, you know, not bouldering as much as I, maybe uh needed to um to grow that power and strength 
Um, so now in my climbing, I go through these big phases where, you know, I'll just go bouldering. When I'm training, when I'm preparing for a trip, I will mostly train my bouldering, um, my power, and some power endurance. So, you know, more in the 15, 20, 30 move range. Um, and then when I go on a trip, I just assume that for the first week, um, first two weeks even, I am going to get my butt kicked. I'm going to be like... Like, I'm going to feel like a terrible climber. I'm going to be like, wow, I can't do anything. None of my training worked. I'm going to text Lee, my mentor, like a million times and be like, dude, I suck. I can't do anything. Um, and then almost always, like two days later, I'm like, yo, I did two 514s today and I won on my project, you know? So for me, it's, you know, a lot of times, and Johnson's the same way, a lot of like other climbers are similar. You, you, um, you know, your endurance might come down a little bit, but your power is higher. And, and, and I don't know the science behind it all, but like, you know, endurance sticks around longer, the power and things like that. Um, or for me, the baseline of endurance is so high that I can let it go for a while and, and it can come back relatively quickly. It's always scary because I, you know, I get somewhere and I'm like, man, I suck and I can't, I'm getting pumped on the warm ups. I just feel like, I don't feel like myself, you know, but then then it, it changes. <laughs> yeah, great. So like on a trip like that, you're not even training up endurance until you get out there. I guess because you've got such a strong endurance base, you're basically bringing your endurance up just once you get to that area. I want to advise any, many people like, you know, to not do any endurance climbing before a big like Spain trip, you know, it's, that's not like the smartest, I think, but, um, and I will do some for sure. Um, it's just not like, you know, it's not the the priority necessarily for me. Um, and that could change, obviously. Maybe at some point I'm like, I really need to be more fit for this trip um, or something like that. But yeah. And like you said, like a lot of it is periodized. So, you know, strength, power, power endurance, and you're just like bleeding all of those things into each other. Um, so then, you know, if your power, if your power, if your strength's really good, your power is going to be better. If your power is really good, then your power endurance is going to be better. If your power endurance is really good, then your endurance is going to be better. So I kind of see it um, kind of like that build up in a way. The professor Mac is in the house today. I love it. I love the... Bro, I, Ryan, I, I never feel that, you know, I don't, you know, I'm just a Kentucky boy <laughs> and I don't always feel very smart. But when I get it, when I talk about rock climbing, I, uh, I'm like, oh, cool. I do know what I'm talking about sometimes. Yeah. It, Not well, always, you know. Look, believe me, it's, it surprised me as much as it's surprising you that all of a sudden you you know what you're talking about here in this conversation. But what a, what a delight that a professional rock climber <laughs> knows what they're talking about. Knows what they're talking about. Yeah. Um, but the thing is, is like, yeah, on the in, on the inverse of that though, like Lee would be mad at me when I, you know, twelve years later still couldn't tell you the difference between anaerobic and aerobic work. You know, <laughs> capacity. I don't like. I know what they mean, but I also don't know what they mean. So um, he's going to laugh really hard when he hears this part. Uh, well, that, that's great. <laughs> Good. Well, we'll, we'll do a, another one after you've studied for a while. We'll bring you back on and talk about the different um, energy systems or the physiological. The science chart. That's right. I don't know. The, I don't know the science. -y but, things. you know, one thing that um, I. I'm like, get on the wall and get pumped. Right. And so I think that's a good, I think that's a, honestly a great kind of transition for us here. Um, and I think I, I want us to get into kind of the, these different levels, right? Beginner, intermediate, and advanced. Let's look at beginners. It's been a minute since you've been there, yep. but um, you certainly worked with beginners and I'm not too far. I mean, I'm <laughs> in many cases, I'm still in that bucket myself. So what do you think just through the lens of endurance, what is maybe the most common challenge or pitfall that you recognize in beginners yeah so i'm gonna go ahead and say you know a common challenge for beginner climbers is um it's just learning what you know pump is you might be a boulder and you fail and you're not even sure you know you're not even understanding what is necessarily happening um so you don't necessarily have an awareness of why you're failing quite yet 
Um, you're not sure if you lack the strength to hold the hold, the power to get to the hold, or the endurance to hold on to that hold after doing a lot of moves. Um, so you, I think the awareness of, of why you're failing or what is happening um, is probably the first biggest kind of challenge that beginner climbers face, as well as just getting pumped, you know? Um, you know, they get pumped and they get tired and they might, um, you know, rapid fire. They might be trying to boulder problem over and over and over again. They, they just think their forearms are tired. Yeah, that makes a ton of sense. And I've certainly experienced that myself, still do sometimes. So so now what do you recommend to beginners in order to address those those kind of common challenges and, and pitfalls? So I would, I would encourage those people to um, climb, just climb a lot. It's going to be, you know, cliche, but the, the biggest number one answer, um, you know, getting on ropes, climbing on top rope or lead and, you know, expanding how many routes um, or boulder problems you're doing in a session. So you're building some stamina there, um, not necessarily like just endurance, but you're building stamina to build the endurance as well. Um, so you're getting kind of into climbing shape as well. Mm -hmm. um, I would encourage those people to, uh, to learn um, a lot of skills, like kind of simple skills, like uh, breathing is going to be crucial. Um, learning how to breathe well while climbing is is really important and something I struggle with. Um, knowing that you're safe um, is another really, really big one. I think people, um, especially in the kind of beginner zone, like we all get scared. Um, we all get scared on lead and things like that. And when you get scared, um, you're going to start over gripping and you're going to get more popped. Um, so knowing that you're safe um, or communicating with your partner, Blair, or whatever, things like that um, is going to be absolutely huge for pushing your endurance further um once you get rid of you know start working through some of those fear challenges um you're going to find yourself being more comfortable on on the hold that you're on um learning how to shake out um is is another thing you know i know a lot of climbers um who just uh, want to go from the ground to the top as fast as they can you know and they're not stopping anywhere at all um they're not stopping to chalk out they're not stopping to breathe um so learning where you know you can where you can calm down where you can sit for a moment whether that's uh you know in a no hand sledge when you're outside or on a big jug or you know when we get more into the advanced section um like what i do here in rifle a lot what rifle is known for is knee bars and things like that so finding um, more advanced resting techniques as well to manage the pump yeah, let me pause there for a second. Um, it's, it's a lot of great stuff right there. And I think kind of the big area of focus here for beginners is just getting comfortable feeling pump and looking for opportunities to slow the heart rate or just be comfortable, right? Be comfortable figuring out rest, be comfortable just on the wall in general. And so aside from just, I don't know, just being on a wall, um, like what did you do or what do you recommend people do in order to find that comfort zone? Yeah. And then, well, I'll go into some tips for that. I would say, you know, for me, um, I grew up climbing at Rock Sport, which had this tower that went around the middle. Um, and to be honest, me and some of the kids back in the day would, you know, we would get on the tower and we would, uh, you know, say the first person to fall off um, buys the other person a Snickers bar or something like that. And so we would just be on this very easy terrain a lot of times. Um, and just be moving, you know, and there would be times where we would, we would be on the wall for an hour just as kids goofing around, you know, and a lot of like slab, slab walls where you could stay forever. Um, or we'd try to push each other off or, you know, at the end of an hour, we would both like step off, you know, on the count of three or something like that. And only one of us would step off. But, uh, you know, I, I think the biggest tip is, is just spending time on the wall. Um, even if it's at the end of the session and you just get on a jug on a slap wall, you don't even need to, you don't even need to be doing different climbing moves. You can just be on one hold on big feet and just learn to be comfortable on the wall. And then, you know, move that back to a more slightly overhanging wall or a steeper wall and just learning how to, or moving in a traverse or moving up and down. Um, but just spending like very uh, you know, this is what some people would consider like cap climbing, I guess. I'm not sure the, the, the terms that people use necessarily, but like 
just spending time on the wall, not even getting pumped. Like you could be on the wall for 30 minutes and not get pumped. And that is actually going to teach you a lot of just being, being on a wall and, and learning how to stand on your toes and having your feet get tired and having your hands get tired and your skin get tired and, and, and learn to kind of push through some of those, um, some of those other things that aren't just your forearms, aren't just your, your, like you said, the physical side of endurance climbing, but the, the, the whole package of endurance climbing. Let's move on to intermediate. Uh, and I guess I'd put myself in this category. I'm not quite sure how, you know, one defines intermediate. It's kind of, there's no clear definitions, right? Maybe you've been climbing for a few years. Maybe it's a grade. I don't know. Maybe it's you're pushing into 510 in the sport zone, um, 511. Maybe it's um, kind of V2 or V3 as a boulder. It's tough. It's like, I guess, define intermediate however you want to define intermediate, dear listener. How would you define intermediate, Drew? Um, yeah, I think if you've been climbing for, you know, I, I, I'd even say two years, you know, I think you're um you're adjusted in if you're you know you're 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 about climbing you know climbing is something that you regularly want to do um you are you're uh, passionate about it and i'd say you've made it past kind of that that honeymoon moon phase and you're you're trying to get better um i would kind of maybe identify that as an intermediate climber you're more comfortable on the sharp end you're moving up through the grades whatever that means for you and um, where where do the challenges arise for that level, that intermediate level climber with regard to endurance, do you think? Oh, um, so what came to my mind immediately is, uh, is a lot of um, some more tactical things. So things like route. And that, my friend, wraps up your free taste, your bonus episode here with Drew Mack on endurance. Let me tell you, there's another, I don't know, 40 minutes or something like that of this episode where he goes through intermediate and advanced and then loops back to cover even more pro tips, pitfalls, and actionable beta for climbers of all levels when it comes to building endurance. If you're looking to build out that part of your climber toolkit, and you'd like to hear the rest of this episode, pop over to patreon.com slash the struggle climbing show. And for just a few bucks, you know, the cost of a, a fancy cup of coffee or a cheap beer, you're going to get access to the full episode here with Drew Mack on endurance. You'll get access to all upcoming pro clinics that we've got going on. And there are some good ones already in the can. And um, you'll also get ad free episodes, swag, and just a sweet, warm feeling knowing that you're a part of the struggle community, which is helping to keep the lights on here in the utility room slash podcasting closet. So thank you so much for your support. Pop over to patreon.com slash the struggle climbing show to learn more. And of course, you can cancel at any time. So check it out. And uh, we will have more pro clinics coming up soon, but also more episodes of the struggle climbing show, which are free to everyone coming at you next week with some more blockbuster names. Remember, the struggle makes us stronger. Let's climb hard and do good things in the world. <laughs>